Uh, the topics we're going to speak about now are uh, related to the previous presentation. It's only to, we're going to, but to provide some, some clarification to elaborate on the, on some uh, topics outside of the scope of what are the, the, the requirements. Um, this uh, presentation or this topic is also the result of some uh, work that uh, we are currently conducted at the IEA uh, and that has brought a lot of debate. Actually, we finalized this work from our side uh, more than uh, a year ago. I presented a draft to the General Conference of uh, the IEA last uh, year, and we asked for comments, and we got comments quite late and so on. And then we got uh, our committees involved in the member states and so on, and we got uh, so many comments, and we had to have to, have to discuss uh, a tech talk in our uh, committees, which is not uh, usual, because we only discuss this, uh, the safety standards there, not the, not the tech talks. So, uh, but finally, from the part of my division, it has been approved last week. So I hope that after that, it is just uh, basically the editorial process and we could uh, publish the document. And the idea is that uh, when we develop these uh, requirements, we introduce the, uh, some new concepts, like uh, DEC, and uh, some new terminology, for which this is not, uh, there is not a common understanding. People, I think, don't know what uh, they understand, or not everybody understands the same under this concept. So we try to put some, uh, provide some uh, harmonized understanding on this thing, try to explain some topic uh, before we develop safety guides, because if we don't know exactly what everything means, it will be really very challenging, if not impossible, to develop safety guides, and that then they will be approved. So we initiate uh, this uh, tech doc and uh, to address those topics. Maybe the mistake was to, to call this uh, tech doc a consideration for the application of the requirements for design. Maybe this is a problem, as we have called the tech doc uh, hot topics and cool knowledge on Nuka Power Plant design and people will not care very much, but now because we said, they say now you are interpreting the requirements in a tech talk, and this is what we got stuck. But, uh, okay, apart from this thing, hopefully I'm not being recorded and uh, people will pass this to the IA, my opinions, and then, okay. Uh, the idea was to elaborate on some of the topics. We are not going here to explain all the requirements, but to bring some clarity uh, sometimes to introduce some debate about uh, the, the, some of the topics. And these are the topics we address there. They address what are the, the plan states considering the design, not only for the reactor, but also for the spent fuel pool. The, what are design extension conditions without core degradation and with uh, fuel damage. We elaborate, we discuss what is the design basis of the plant equipment. Still some people have not a good understanding of this. And um, we have had a lot of debate on that. So uh, then uh, what is the defense in depth strategy? How to apply defense in depth for new plants? The independence of the levels of defense in depth and common cause failures. Then we were dealing with this reliability of the heat transfer to the ultimate heat sink. As you mentioned before, you have to have an alternate path or an alternate heat sink. We were discussing about these design mar margins and prevention of crevice effects, uh, when we have to have additional margins and so on. And uh, then the very important also concept that has been introduced about the practical elimination of uh, early or large releases, something also an external hazard. And we also touch upon finally this topic of the use of, uh, I put mobile, but doesn't need to be mobile, non-permanent sources for power and cooler. So that's, that's the, the topic simply we touch upon and so on. And I'm going to explain some of them. Uh, I don't know how much, the, how much the time I have, one and a half hours. Okay, let's see what we can achieve. I'm sure this time there will be questions. I'm going to ask you for two things, because otherwise we will not progress. 
The first thing is that maybe some of you have been working in a nuclear power plant before in your country or a regulator or something. Some of these concepts you have then ingrained here and you're 100% sure what does it mean and so on. So for the moment, be open. And if I say something that it is different from what you have in your brain, give me an opportunity to explain it to you and not say, no, no, it's not like this, something like that. Just be open, try to understand. If you don't understand something, you ask me, and I will explain to you. If you disagree with me, leave it at the end, okay? Because otherwise, you know this thing, we get in the middle of a slide, and maybe then we don't progress. Maybe you are not very challenging people, but uh, the experience I made <laughs> with all the audience, uh, we present a slide, <laughs> and we we'll get stuck in the slide. Because, no, no, it's not like that, okay. Good. Uh, so. Plan state and design basis. Uh, this is in. I know Marco has explained this thing, but I'm going. To, and I agree very much with uh, Marco what he said. But let's uh, let's try uh, to explain this and, and and elaborate. I don't know how deep in deep he went. I'm explaining here what is the early concept. I don't put explicitly NSR1 because actually NSR1 was, for instance, requiring to design also for civil accidents. But when it came into the practical aspects, instead they will say consideration shall be given to blah, 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 civil action. And this consideration shall be given in reality then, well, it was not translated into uh, a specific requirements or recommendations in the safety guide. Okay? I gave full consideration to whatever my son asked uh, me to do, but then I didn't do it. So I put early concept because of that, but it, can think maybe NSR1 or the previous requirements. So we had at that time the plant states divided into operational states and accident conditions. And it was clear what it was meant and so on. And accident conditions are normal operation. I explained before that in operational states, normal operation is different from operation modes. This is something you define in the technical specification that tells you uh, full power, uh, low power, uh, hot shutdown, cold shutdown. All of this is normal operation, yeah? it's a, or it's an operational state. Um, then we have, if you are not, something happens that cannot be controlled by your control system, so the a failure or deviation cannot be arrested. For normal operation, you normally go into an AOO. This is what you expect to see, abnormal operation, AOO. These are things that you are thinking, considering your design that can see can happen during the life of the plan. So to put some values, I think Marco put in 10 to the minus 2 per year, the less frequent. You go down the need, maybe it's called accident. No. If in normal operation, your systems that have that to respond to these uh, AOs don't work, you are going to enter in an accident condition. In SSR, in NSR1, if you look at the graph, it's at the end. The accident conditions are subdivided in two small categories. Uh, I will explain now what does it mean you go here. It is also possible, this is my error here, that you go directly from normal operation into accident condition. This is when you have an accident. You have a loca, you are not going to an AO, you are skipping an AO. You need directly the intervention of safety system. So you can also go from normal operation into an accident condition. Now, this is called DBA, design basis accident. And for DBA, you define you design, excuse me, safety system. The small thing here is because when you look at the, at the design basis accident, the way they call it now, there are some accidents that are an envelope from others. And these are, this is what they call design basis accident because these are what you take into account for the design of safety system. So when you have an accident there, it can be the ejection of a control rod or it can be a very small loca or something like this. Sometimes this belongs here. This is a, this is a part, it's good you take it into account, but when you design your emergency core cooling system, there is something more demanding that for establishing the basis of the safety system, and this is what they call this DBA. This subdivision has disappeared currently. 
It's not very dramatic. I think it was okay. Has disappeared. Okay. In any way, you can go into a, an, an accident condition directly, like a loca, streamline break, uh, whatever, thin generation to rupture, or you can go into an accident condition because you have an AO and your systems for AO fail. Like you have a turbine and reactor trip and you have to cool through the steam generator and uh, you cannot cool and or if it's in a boiling water reactor RCIC and then what? You have to cool the core so at the end you have to do something like feed and bleed or something you use your safety system you enter the, uh, in an accident condition. Okay so we are now in, in, a, in a design basis accident <coughs> and uh, in the earlier times this was called the design basis of the plan as a whole. I should not use now this uh, this uh, name because they are asking me to change uh, what uh, the, the terminology. But everybody was happy with this, and this is uh, used in many regulatory documents because this more or less covers the broad spe the spectrum of conditions for which the plan was designed, and this is how it was called a design the design basis of the plan. But we come to the point that. This is a misleading concept because the equipment here for DBA, for LOCA, is not designed the same as the circulation water here for normal operation. So in reality, the design basis is for every piece of equipment. But there is an overall concept we call design basis of the plan. It's a bit misleading. Okay. But let it be there for the moment. Now, if we fail to mitigate an accident, we come here, we exceed the design basis. Now it depends what is the situation. Of course, if I have something like a large locker and, uh, and uh, a low uh, head uh, safety injection or the accumulators fail, really there is no grace period. Yeah? The core is going to be uncovered and uh, there's not much you can do. But in some conditions, you have some time, some grace period before experimenting a fuel degradation. So this is the situation in which you exceed the design basis, but still you can do something. And eventually, if you don't do anything, or if you fail to do something, you are going to melt the core, and then you are in a severe accident. Another story is when you say what is core melt and what is core damage, and, and how you define core damage, severe core damage, we have also a debate there. So let's not discuss this for the moment and let's not take this as binary or whatever. Let's imagine that whoever, whatever regulator designer establishes here what are the, what is the borderline, what are the conditions. If you cross it, you are in a severe accident. Now, that part was called beyond design basis. And what you do here for preventing the core damage or for mitigating the core damage is called accident management. In particular, this part is called civil accident management. And there, you use whatever you have and whatever you can. So, but in, in principle, nothing was designed for that. Huh? So the containment was designed for a DBA. Containment was not designed for a civil accident. And you can use many things, you know, even normal systems, even, but it was beyond the design basis. So, so basically, this was procedures, some this and so. Of course, the plants have upgraded and have implemented some things, and some people put a recombiner, and some put up put other things. But, but the plant is not designed for a civil accident. Good. So this was the early concept, and then let me put here, I have some errors now here in addition. Something like this that will bring you from here to there will be called a beyond design basis accident. Because this is something for which you don't design. So I don't take credit of this. This is not going to happen. And uh, yeah, it's beyond the design basis. Uh, why is the error there in the middle, the, the arrow stopping there? Well, this is for one reason. It is because sometimes you consider that accident a beyond design basis accident. Imagine that you say, I don't design for 
a double guillotine last break. I think this was the case of the VVRs even before, and there were people who were asked uh, that the VVR should be designed for the for a large brain locker. Is this the case or something like this or not? No? VVR people, no? Okay. Anyway, no answer. Good. So, but it may be the case that you consider something a beyond design basis accident, and because your safety systems have a lot of margins, maybe it's still possible to stop it there. So that's why I put a double arrow, but it's not very important. So this is the picture of the past. Now, oh, another error. It's possible to go from an AO also into this situation. It should not be possible to go there, but it is possible. And this is why. This is because sometimes for both AOs and for accidents, we use some systems or structures in common because it is not practical or possible to have uh, independent systems. And I give you an example. For instance, you are not going to have a different scrum system for an AO and for uh, an accident. So you're not going to have two sets of rods in the reactor, one coming from the top with an AO, and when there is an accident, you put an alternative shutdown that goes from the bottom. Or the power supply simply powers everything. There are buses and so on. So the emergency diesels that are there for, for loss of offset power, loss of offset power is an AO. These emergency uh, diesels are also for the case of an accident. So you share things, and this is why for an AO you can go there. And, the, and the, the two corresponding examples will be something called ATWS, so an anticipated transient is here, an AO, without a scrum, you go there. So ATWS in the old plants is beyond design basis, and also SBO. Good. I think everybody has understood this thing. This is a traditional uh, concept, way of thinking, and so on. Now we have the new requirements. And the new requirements become very tricky, very, very tricky. And the first thing is the same, so I'm going to reproduce. But now we, stay, we are already having a problem here. You don't see the problem. I try to put it here, but I don't, I don't think it's actually. When you go into the definitions of the SSR2 plus 1, now it turns out that accident conditions means accident conditions included in the design. Before here, every accident conditions was everything because these were included in the design and these were not. So now accident conditions are accident conditions included in the design. The question is, are there any other accident conditions uh, not considered in the design? And the answer is possibly yes. And it's not going to be seen in this picture. I to put it here, I'll explain. So now, the change is that if you take the same as before, now we're going to design for something more. And I will say that the design basis of the plan as a whole, it has been extended. Well, I cannot say this officially because some countries disagree, and I cannot say that. Some other countries agree. But some people say no, because in principle, because they create problems in the regulations if I say that this thing is in the design basis for the new plan. But if you think openly, and now you're going to design for something more, so you are extending the design basis. Why? Because now we introduce in the design something called design extension conditions. And you have to be very careful what is this. So in design extension conditions, these are conditions for which you design. Huh? These are accident conditions considered in the design. And there are two types of conditions. Uh, conditions without Cormel or without significant fuel degradation, both in the reactor and in the pool. And these conditions are optional. And are optional because you design here if you think that the reliability of the safety system is insufficient, and you want to add something in addition to prevent the severe accident. I don't know if I'm going to make a mistake or not, but I try to mm, write something. So imagine you have this error be significant of a, a postulated initiating event, and let's see, I don't know, the different, this is something like 10 to the minus 2 per year, something like, or 10 to the minus 1. Okay, good. So now this is an AOO, and my AOO system has a certain reliability. I put this is 10 to the minus 2. So 
So, and we'll bring them to 10 to the minus 2. And then I have a safety system should be highly reliable. And it brings me a reduction of the frequency here. Let me put it 10 to the minus 3 only. Huh? So somebody will say, okay, well, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, this is 10 to the minus 5. But this is just for an AO and not for the whole plan. So if I put myself for the whole plan 10 to the minus 5, I say for each AO, I want to have at least come here with a 10 to the minus 6. So I put this. And then I say, well, I better implement something in addition. And I come up with the design feature for that will bring me there. OK, well, forget the numbers. Huh? But put, you put here another 10 to the minus 2, whatever. I say, OK, it's fine. Good. But there may be the case in which it's not necessary because in another AO, I have something like this, and I have another one that brings me there, and then my safety system brings me there, and I say, I don't need it. Or, so, this is something that I do, I supplement to increase the reliability of the provisions that I have before. And the question is, why is DEC? And it's called DEC because I'm allowed to design with another criteria. Because if I design DEC, as a safety system, with the same safety class as safety system, with redundancy, uh, that means single failure criteria needs to be met. And I can have to do, uh, I am also apply conservative analysis. Somebody say, well, what you're doing, you are enlarging your safety system, put in another safety system, so it will be put in the area of safety system, and it will be right. So, and I'll put you another sample. We talked about the, the, the SBO before, yeah? So you have a plant with two diesel generators, and you have a loss of offset power, and they fail, and then you have no power. And you know the core will not be uncovered in the next three, four hours, and you know that, uh, okay, as soon as you maintain the integrity of the seals of the pumps and so on, you have time. Okay, so now for this thing, because there is a great speed, otherwise. So you put an SVO diesel to power some essential equipment. So you add the SVO diesel. This is an SVO. This diesel doesn't need to meet the same requirements as the emergency diesel generator. You don't need to have two. You have another consideration. So this is a safety feature for that. But imagine that there is one plant, like, for instance, uh, the, the German plants, convoy, and so on, that instead of having one diesel generator, have four emergency diesel generators with four redundancy. And they have even another four in a bunker there for a case of external hazard and so on. And the question is, why do I need more? I don't need more. So you design, you decide that you will not design for deck. You will not design, put anything in addition. Hmm? It's an option. So I don't need it. So if it fails, that's it. I go on the third to Cormel, I buy it. So there is a number of situations that they are not expressed in the safety requirements for which different designers design something in addition to prevent the Cormel. And this is technology dependent. And some people install something, and some people install not. So the regulator will decide if the reliability provided by the safety system is enough or not. So in some cases, you install something. In other cases, not. When you install something, it's a safety feature for DEC. But it is also a safety feature for DEC because you are allowed to design with another rules. Because if you design with the same rules, say, well, this is a, another safety system. You are enlarging the, the, the applicability of the safety system. So that's why I say that's optional. What is not optional, you look read at all requirements, is now that the requirements say that you do have to postulate core damage. So now they tell you that you have to design for severe accidents. They don't tell you what are the initiating conditions here for which you have to design. This is something to discuss. I don't think it's very complicated. But you have to postulate some severe accident conditions for which you design. And what you design? You design your safety features for 
severe accidents. That means the safety features for the containment. The containment itself, the component cooling system, the uh, cooling of the containment, the core catcher, and so on. Because the ultimate goal of these safety features is to prevent a large or early release, because we have said that this needs to be practically eliminated. So the question is, this is what we now will call beyond design basis. But I said this terminology is not accepted by some of our member states. And they are asking me, and I'm doing, and I'm going to calling design basis, I'm calling, this, calling the plan design envelope and beyond plan design envelope. I didn't have time to change it here, but I think it changed in a later slide. So that's the story. Now, the problem is that there still may be some beyond design basis action. Something for which I have this, it may happen, but I have not designed. And you don't see this slide because accident conditions in reality means accident conditions considering the design, but there may be some that are not considering the design. And that's why I try to put it here. Because you still may have something for which you come here and there is no feature to mitigate this accident. So you're still doing accident management. If you come into the point in which you melt the core, then I assume that even for this beyond design basis accident, the safety features for civil accidents that are mandatory will be useful. Okay? So I think you are quite confused already. Uh, I forgot the last square that comes from this need for practical elimination. So at the end, you have to demonstrate uh, that you practically eliminate this thing. But I also have been asked to remove this from my tech talk, so you can remove it from the screen you have not seen. That thing was about uh, a confusion because people don't understand that it is different design basis from design basis accident and corresponding beyond design basis uh, from beyond design, ba beyond design basis accident from beyond design basis or so on. It's for clarification. You have a question? Tell me. There is no deck there. There is but no deck. Now, but now, uh, you say that this is designed, the deck is also included in the new design basis. The equipment which is designed with the accident needs some reliability. Safety criteria has to be applied. So, so far, uh, I don't know how to match all these concepts together. Well, I think the concept much together. The question, because the, match, the question is that we have include this thing now here, but we have not said what are the design rules to be applied, and what are the, the codes, and what are the safety class, and what does it mean? Because I can tell you this is the safety class for, I don't know, uh, a hydrogen recombiner. So, so, so what? What do you do with that? Because I know if you tell me a pipe safety class 2, I know what does it mean. And I go to the ASME code, I know what does it mean. Now, we have introduced things, but now what design rules to apply, uh, this, this, is now, this is another story. We are now at the level of the concept, but you have to forget the old plans. The question is now that this is now part of the design. It is called deck because you design for that. Or I'm going to put you another way. A civil accident is not necessarily a deck. A deck without core melt is a civil accident. But not vice versa, because here you have a civil action for which you have not designed. When we talk about, uh, then they also we have, I will come later, what is deck and what is not, because also people have different understanding. Okay? I mean, let me continue and try to see if we can bring some more clarity. That's another story. We also put it in the tech talk. We are not here the regulator to say what are the, 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 the acceptable criteria for AO, for DBA, and so on. That's another story. I, I understand. For everything, when you design, you need criteria. But let me, for the moment, no, don't enter in which is the, 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 the criteria. So this is uh, just the IE definition that you can uh, 
you can find in the requirements, and I think that um, I already uh, explained it to you, it's not uh, very well articulated, and so uh, I try now not to go into the definition, try to be to explain what is the concept. To say something, where this comes from, this was first uh, introduced by the European Utility Requirement, uh, uh, to define some condition sequence by, by some whatever deterministic probabilistic that go beyond design, they don't call beyond design, basically called beyond design, uh, excuse me, beyond design, a basis accident, but conditions include complex sequence, severe accident, and so on. So this was the first time. Then we implemented. Then WENRA was not using this. WENRA is the Western Association of Nuclear, uh, Western, uh, West European Nuclear Regulators, blah, blah, blah. So now they are also using DEC, and they are uh, issue a booklet on DEC. When WENRA uses something on DEC, even before they were not using, now the problem is that the IA cannot be different from WENRA, because WENRA already took a position that we are always waiting, waiting, waiting to meet uh, the, the criteria of everybody. And then uh, to say something that, uh, I mean, it's not that we are very different from WENRA, but you know, it is, uh, they were now they established something and they want the IEA not to be different. Then he's something said not completely new. Huh? The concept, this SBO, ATWS rules, or something like this, was already some uh, known problem, and it exists for, uh, for uh, this is the 80s or something. But the question also whether this is deck or not, because you can, you can uh, uh, put any of these safety features in your, in your plant, but this doesn't mean that your plan is designed for design extension conditions. When you design, then you have to meet this criteria that you're telling me, you know? for both preventing core damage and for the other. So the fact that you put a hydrogen recombiner in your plant doesn't mean that your plant is now designed for civil accident. You have something, huh? but, or the, because you put a diesel generator, so. Good. Uh, what can be the list of Design extension with uh, core damage that can be used in the design. At the, the IE in the requirement doesn't put anything. We saw what is put by WENRA, what is put by. We came up with some list. And uh, I say generic. I mean, generic means you know you choose whatever because this is design specific, except for SBO. SBO, by the way, is uh, was recommended. SBO was in the standard, but I think everybody has agreed already in SBO. So we put this thing. And then we start getting uh, plenty of comments. We are not saying that you have to design for that, but so. But these are things that we see from uh, different organizations and from designers and so on. So total loss of it, what uh, LOCA together with the complete loss of one ECCS and so on. You have always here, if you see an initiating event with a failure of a whole level of defense in depth at the level two. Uh, or with a failure of a safety system, a complete loss of one ECCS system. So, th so they are always entailing multiple failures on, um, or steam, or, uh, or even uh, some complex, uh, some complex uh, PIEs, or a PIE leading to another thing like a mainstream light break. Uh, Inducing a stimulated to true rupture, and so what we collected were showing the different designs or what they call what they have on something. Then you start thinking and see what these people actually do for those things, and we come into another point. So, this was this is just a slide. I will maybe not this. We say six. What time we say to finish? Six. 5.15, one hour. So that is just to uh, make this point between the difference of this concept of the design, the design basis of the plan as a whole concept, you know, but that in reality is not very accurate because each individual component, it has its own design basis, and this is clear in also in our requirements, and the design basis of each component, it has a set of information or specifications that, uh, uh, Establish the 
needs and requirements necessary for the design of the component in terms of the functions performed by this, operation state has to work, uh, conditions generated by external, external hazard of the component has to withstand an appropriate access criteria for reliability, availability, functionality, and so on. So the design basis is specific for each component. The thing from the whole plan is an overall picture, but not everything is designed for the same. And here I have another slide that uh, you have probably seen from Marco, but now it's animated because uh, I do animations, that is going to explain you the, this concept. So you have the conditions that you have seen before, and now for each of these conditions, you have equipment that operates under those conditions. Yeah? So you are going to have equipment for AO and for normal operation, and you will have to establish the design basis for equipment of operational states. And there's going to be equipment for DBA. These are called safety systems. So this includes the safety systems, SSC, that are necessary to control DBAs, and I put some AO, this, this overlapping here, because as we mentioned before, there is something like the reactor scrum, the emergency power supply, that are for both, huh? because it's not practical or possible. And then we have the safety features for deck. You define the conditions, but defining the conditions is not everything. Now you have to have systems for this, for this condition, because otherwise it's not deck. It's only co it's deck because you design for them. So when you design for them, you need to have systems and components for deck, and you have to establish the design basis of them. So you have design basis for uh, equipment to prevent core damage. I said this can be optional, preventive part, and then you have the design basis for mitigating. And this is basically the design basis for the containment and the containment systems. Uh, now, of course, the containment is also used for DBA, but uh, it's designed as a safety feature for deck. So it means the design basis for this containment. I will come now, maybe even more. Let me continue with the animation. So when you design any of this equipment, I cannot make you know fragment the things hundred times. But this means that for designing this, I need to be taking into account the conditions generated by internal and external hazards if I need them to survive. Also the same from here. Uh, and I need to take into account for each of the equipment the criteria necessary for functionality, reliability, and so on. Of course, the criteria are not the same. The reliability for a safety system is not the same as the reliability for a normal operation. And the same also to the, the, uh, the need to withstand external hazards. Uh, here, I don't care if it fails. I have a scrum. Uh, but here, I don't want the safety system to fail. And remember that some of those things we have also said that we, don't, we want to have even more margin. So that means that doesn't mean that these conditions apply equally to everything. So when I come something I say as the containment, the containment is designed for both TBA, but it is also designed for the conditions of civil action. So it's more demanding. So uh, I cannot put everything in the, in the same slide. It becomes very complicated. Uh, this will be called now, I change not design basis anymore, design, plan design envelope. And this will be something beyond the envelope that I want to practically eliminate. And, beyond, and uh, so And here, the conclusion is, there's nothing designed for those conditions. Because if I would design for something, I will be here or there or somewhere. So here you don't design. I have been asked to remove this part. So this part will not, also not be in the tech talk because some people don't want to see. OK. Now, it comes to the level of defense in depth. And I need to take some water. Uh, I explained you, many people explain you the levels of defense in depth. I'm not going to explain you. This is the insect level of defense in depth. Uh, we also change a bit of the meaning because you see here, for instance, control systems are here, but you know, this is an AO, so the control systems are necessary for the level one because if you, a plan without control system will, will, <laughs> will not prevent an AO. But, so insight is not perfect. There were some things here and then at the end the table put control system, but it is not there. But <coughs> It was used to use uh, to establish our terminology, and this thing, SSR to slash one, the requirements are inspired on this, but it's not the same. It's, it cannot be the same also because now we have introduced tech and so on. So, in an SR one, okay, something else. Insac does not make a direct association of the levels of defense in depth with the plan states. You can 
think of this because you are saying here control of accidents within the design basis, control of civil accidents. So, well, this looks to me, you know, that I am here in a civil prior condition, like in the. So, and it was not. So, it doesn't make an association, but you can understand this association, but it is not made by insight. Now, it's practical, huh? not totally necessary, but practical to have this association. And when we make this association, we run into problems because some people see different things from the others. So, let me try to explain something. In SR1, there is level one associated with normal operation. And I put something there that is going to disappear. Because in level one, it is not only, of course, if nothing fails, you are in normal operation. But in, uh, in, in, in the level one of defense in depth, you see some things like citing, like high quality in the manufacturer, in the fabrication, in service inspection. There are a number of things there that don't only apply to equipment for normal operation. You want to have high quality in the equipment for safety. So this, if you want the level one of defense in there, we have a level zero as well. So this is a cross-cutting thing. This is everything you do to prevent failures. But of course, if, if nothing fails, then I'm in normal operation, yes. But, so it creates a confusion. But since this is not my topic now in the next thing, this part disappears. But you have to understand that when you read level one of defense in depth, there are some things there that apply to all the equipment, not just to... Uh, 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 equipment for normal operation. Then we have level two, it's easy to associate to AOs. Then we have level three, it was easy to associate in, in SR1 to design basis accident. This was the unknown, it was beyond the design basis, so it was level four, uh, either severe or not severe accident. And now we have the new situation. And what we do now? And here's where we have a problem. And so at the end, we do it in one way. We were asked to do it the other way. When we did it the other way, we say we go back to the first way because people change their mind. And at the end, we are presenting the two ways and say, you make your own choice. I have my own opinion, but I cannot give you my own opinion in a paper. So we have two options, level one, level three, level four. They subdivide in for A, for B. The terminology is not in our standards. This will be the option of some countries. I can tell you this is considered by the US, Canada, Japan, and so on. And uh, this was another option that it is more used in Europe by WENRA, in which level three includes every, all the features to prevent uh, core damage. <coughs> if you read carefully the requirements of the IEA, the level three of defense in depth, the way it is described there, the objective is to prevent core damage. And so it looks like uh, it was in the line of WENRA, but I cannot take part on this. So we have two options. And then the question is, who cares? This is a matter of terminology. I think this option is consistent with the prevention of the barriers. Because you know, you see, here you are have the integrity of the fuel, and here not. This option is not consistent with the status of the barriers, but here it is consistent with the use of different rules for design here and then there. Because here you have to use the conservative single failure criteria and so on. Here is not. This is not the case. Here you have different rules in the same level. The important thing is not if you call 3A, 3B, 4, and, and 3 or 4A, 4B. The important thing is which rules, which acceptance criteria are you going to use for designing those things. This is a problem to resolve, but it is not yet resolved. So now I have a picture that looks like this. I think Marco presented to you. The difference is here. Some countries say 3A, 3B. Some of the people say 4A, 4B, and 3. And uh, as a difference with WENRA, uh, with WENRA, excuse me, with INSAC, instead of putting all the essential means together and so on, we have been more clear, specific. We put now safety features for that, and we distinguish between means for design and means for operation, because defense in depth is not only design. Yeah? And if you see also here, you have, for instance, the technical support center, which is now required for, for uh, core melt. Yeah? You can use it before, but it should not be necessary for, for, for here. So now, that's the thing. 
I don't know. <coughs> okay, I'll try. We also give some consideration on what does it mean the uh, levels of defense in there for the spent fuel pool, because we didn't see it somewhere else, and, and it's interesting. So in the spent fuel pool, uh, several designs, we try to see the, make the same approach, and then you say, okay, normal operation is level one. This is what, like, you know, like with the reactor, nothing fails. You use all this high quality, conservative design and everything. In reality, you use this for everything. So you try to prevent any failures. Level two, what is level two? Level two are credible failures that you expect to happen during the life of the plant. So you may think in a malfunction of the cooling system, small leak perhaps, I don't know, the loss of offside power, of course. So that's uh, your level two. And what you have for the level two? Well, actually, what you have is time to recover the power. Um, you have also emergency power. I uh, say power, sorry, I was thinking about the, 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 the level. You have emergency power that is also for level three, as we said before. And uh, you have to lose the cooling. You have time to reinstall the cooling. There is normally not uh, an alternative cooling for uh, level two. You have some anti-siphoning devices, something like this, you know, but uh, in case that uh, to avoid that uh, this thing is empty, if there's a small leak or something. Uh, I also put a malfunction of the ventilation system, forgot to say. So this is basically level two, but uh, you don't have particular provisions there more than the, the power supply and so on. So normally there is, it could be an alternate cooling. When you go to accident, then it's also the thing, what is an accident in the spent fuel pool? Because we found out that for many spent fuel pool designs, there is not a safety system. So for a DBA, for an accident, you need safety systems. So what happens here is that very often the plants design the normal operating system for level one as a safety system. It has the safety, same safety class, and it's also redundant, and it's uh, powered by the emergency diesels. So you don't have a safety system. You have a normal system that it is designed for safety system. Well, excuse me, by the way, I'm adopting, I cannot have a document that is playing all the time with, this, uh, with the two terminologies. So I use the first one, 3A, 3B, and 4. Yeah? So 3A means deck, DBA, and 3B, deck without core damage. So here the point is that when you have an accident, since what you have is time, time available to recover the, the cooling and so on, and if it is not possible, then you maybe handle this as a deck if you have uh, something in addition to, to, to cool. So uh, we, one accident that can be postulated here is the, the drop of, uh, of a fuel element in the pool, the break of a fuel element, because this, of course, provides produce a, a release of uh, radioactivity. And this can be a design basis accident for the design of the ventilation. So this could be a design basis accident. Now, we go on deck uh, without core damage, you can postulate SVO. You have an SVO diesel for the plant. Normally, it's the same SVO diesel for the spent fuel pool. So it will be a, a, a deck, but not a specific for the pool. It's for, for everything. For the loss of cooling, so the, the deck provisions could be an alternate uh, cooling system uh, or means to refill the pool. And in fact, there are some designs that have the normal system, and then they have another alternative, just one single pump. And they say, well, why don't you call this pump the, the safety system? And you call it deck. I call it deck because this pump actually is not designed with the criteria of safety system. It's curious, but what is designed as a safety system or with the, with the criteria and the quality and the uh, norms of the safety system is the normal operating system. So if we have an alternate pump, this could be deck. And the last part, which is more interesting, is something that this would be deck with uh, uh, fuel damage. This has to be practically eliminated. You don't design for that. You don't design for the melting of the fuel on the pool because uh, it's very difficult, if not impractical. Uh, so if your fuel is uncovered and start melting, oxidizing the cloud and have a circular fire or something like this and so, and the oxidation, then 
then it's going to go down in the pool. It's going to penetrate the liner. The, the pool will disappear. You don't have something like spent fuel catcher. So if you are, if you, if the pool is outside the containment, there is no containment. You go outside, and if it, even if it's inside the containment, you cannot imagine what does it mean. So in reality, you design to prevent the the, 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 the spent fuel pool uh, break. So I don't want to maybe to spend too much time here, but uh, we we'll give consideration also to this. What does it defense in depth for the spent fuel pool? So there is no level four of defense from the spent fuel pool in our understanding. Now, there comes the idea of this independence of the levels of defense in depth, where it has to be as independent as possible. I already mentioned that the full independence is, is not possible because the operator is the same. The earthquake shake the whole plan. You don't have a two scrum systems for different for AOs and DBA. The containment is for DBA and for deck. So there are uh, things that make this full independence impossible. So independence has to be understand as, as much independence as possible. But there are things you can do. And it's not to share many of the systems for normal operation and for accidents. And this happens in all the plan and design and still in some designs. So in particular, we have a requirement that for design extension condition, this is something new that you add here. So what you add here is ridiculous that it is the same as from here, because then there's no independence. So actually, I, don't know, I didn't mention, but uh, uh, we call safety features for deck when you have something specifically designed for deck, or you upgrade some normal system to be used for 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 deck, and then it's not anymore designed not as AO but as as, as deck. And I, I think maybe I finish, and because there will be question, we can also discuss some of these uh, deck conditions. Uh, then, so this uh, tech talk was looking at this independence of the levels and so on, and particularly there is one. Uh, there are some uh, points in which this independence is important, in which is seen that it sometimes is, uh, is not uh, given. One is with the cooling system. Sometimes you have systems for normal operation uh, and uh, for accidents being the same, like component cooling water system in some design. They are using the let down time of the, of the CCVCS and also for the cooling of the seals or the uh, CR uh, main coolant pumps and so on. So this is not normal operation. Then it's also for the cooling of the ECCS and so on. And there are also sometimes uh, other things that uh, in the instrumentation and so on. So they were uh, focusing on those things. So the important thing is uh, to achieve this independence. And I don't have time to go in this thing, but in the, in the tech doc, uh, we go in some details on the independence of the instrumentation. Uh, on the IC systems, because sometimes we want to have full independence, but in reality also there are limitations. You don't want to have to have holes in every part in the primary systems to have in the individual uh, measurements here and there for the sake of independence, because they introduce some other problems. So uh, we give there some uh, some uh, advice about shading and not shading, and basically so say maybe here in general that to prevent common cause failure, each level has to achieve its own necessary level of reliability. And that uh, you have multiple levels of uh, defense is not a justification to weaken the efficiency of one versus the others, and, and so on. So we were dealing there with common cause failures that need to be either prevented or not prevented to be very unlikely. Uh, we don't uh, give the recipe, a prescription, this is what you have to do for the common cause failure. What we basically do is uh, we tell you these are the uh, ways of which two redundant equipment uh, can fail at the same time. One thing is that you share the support systems or systems you know are affecting here and there. This should not be done. You have some sometimes common system interface. Uh, you may have uh, components having multiple functions for different levels. I mentioned this uh, core cooling, for instance. Uh, excuse me, component cooling water that is used in normal operations in some design and DBA, uh, and so on. Operator errors, of course. And then there's something, if you get rid of those things, there's something that people normally call common cause failures, that it is uh, in a more strict sense. It's also seen on the PSAs, where, well, you have also the impact of common external internal hazards. This is what people also think very often, common cause failure. But then there's all these errors in manufacturing, errors in construction or, or design, and so on. Then also inadequate practice in maintenance. All these things, you know, can affect redundant equipment. 
So what we say here is there are several root causes. You have to understand what are the root causes that can affect your redundant equipment. We have to understand also how sometimes there is a root cause, but it is not evident. It doesn't lead to a potential for a failure. It's something that it is there. There's a design error. And uh, I don't know, sometimes maybe the design error is that the, design, the pump is not designed for, I don't know, let's say, very low temperatures that you don't expect some tubing on the, so lubing or some, some pump. So the, the, the error is there, but it's not going to happen unless you have a very cold weather. So you have a, a coupling mechanism. It's not necessary to go into details, but when the root cause and the coupling mechanism come together, you have the potential you're going to develop a common cause failure. And at this point is where you have adequate defensive measures. And, and the defensive measures are different and are adequate for different root causes. So, so you have adequate quality assurance practices, proven design and construction, physical separation, redundancy, diversity, several types, functional and technical diversity, and so on. So automatic announcement of failures, as soon as something fails, you get an alarm, and so on. So not all of this works for all of this. So the physical separation, of course, helps for uh, a fire, but maybe doesn't help for, for something else, for a maintenance error, or vice versa. So the redundancy is not always the, the, excuse me, the diversity is not always the solution. So what we say is you analyze your root causes, and then you think of the defensive measures, and you choose what you need. But, okay, there is not much science, much science on this. Now, um, I will skip maybe the, that thing to be able to come to more quickly to an end, but uh, the, the important thing is that to the extent possible is the message you have to preserve the independence of the levels of defense in depth, because otherwise they are not efficient. Yeah? So you have to be looking at how to prevent these common cause failures. The most important thing maybe is not to share equipment what is not strictly necessary. Um, the cliff edge effect is something also we're discuss. We are saying here that they should not, we should identify issues in which we define a cliff edge effect. Well, maybe this is a small cliff, yeah? Well, you know, you are here, and then all of a sudden you make a small step, and okay, this cliff is very small. Uh, but you understand what's a cliff. So that means is that sometimes it should not be a small deviation in a plan parameter that has unpredictable strong consequences just because uh, so so the design says for the identification uh, and prevention of these cliff edge effects sometimes you cannot prevent the cliff edge effect but you can have a margin to the to the to the cliff edge effect so this was very largely discussed after fukushima they have some, so then we try to to discuss on those things of course uh, we were thinking what is a cliff edge effect huh? everybody understand that if I am producing hydrogen after a civil accident and I'm not in the detonation regime, there is no detonation, then a bit more I'm in the detonation regime. And if the, if the, if the plant de is detonated, the containment breaks. Well, it's a cliff edge effect. I can put maybe some other example. But that's not always necessarily consider the cliff as the break of the containment. So we said, okay, maybe the, this is the big cliff, but there is a small cliff at this one that I do something more and, and I have a local. Uh, so we also said, have a look at exceeding some parameters that will lead to the break of one of the barriers or the loss of one important safety function. It's for consideration. So and the goal is uh, to prove that because the cliff edge effect may be still be there, to make sure that you have sufficient margins. Um, this is a guy, that uh, a, a consultant of the IEA, very experienced in cliff edge effects and safety margins. We call him for consultation. I don't know if you know him. You know him? OK. Uh, <laughs> it's called Wild E. Coyote or something like this, I remember when I was a kid. Um, well, the margins for that. We said that uh, we need to ensure margins. Yeah? Um, so the question is, what are the margins uh, uh, and how we define the margins for that? We also try to, to, to establish how it is so. And, uh, 
we were thinking that uh, the loads that affect tech could be defined in a similar ways as for DBA, but uh, a best estimate could be uh, approached for determining the action scenario and phenomenal conditions. Um, you know what happens is that uh, also when we are dealing with uh, with severe accidents, the use of uh, conservative assumptions may be counterproductive because it is it is uh, you can come into a, a non-realistic uh, observation of, or observation understanding of the phenomena that uh, that is going to 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 happen in the prediction of the of the accident. Uh, the requirements don't make a substantial difference between deck without core mail and, uh, and with core uh, mail uh, uh, regarding the, um, the margins and regarding the uncertainties. We understand that for decks without core mail is something that, well, the picture is gone, but we design here in addition. So we still, we call it deck, but we still have not uh, uh, mailed the core. So the uncertainties here are comparable, more or less comparable, as I said, this in DBA. When we come here, we cannot say the same about the, the uncertainties. We know the uncertainties are larger. And so we are requiring uh, then, uh, because margins are there to compensate uncertainties. Yeah? So and we are requiring margins, even larger margins, so margins always to prevent core melt, but we want more margins to um, against external hazards against only external hazards, to, um, uh, for those equipment that ultimately prevent the last uh, uh, or early radioactive releases. And that comes to the point, what are those? So oh, I'm changing the, the slides are not in the correct order, maybe. Well, we were thinking, of course, for preventing the last release, we definitely have the containment and the containment system and the instrumentation system. And we were thinking, well, you need also the, con the, 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 the control room the technical support center, we were putting there a list of equipment that we understand have to have this larger margin. Some people agree with some, some people not, and so on. Uh, I missed one slide. I don't know why, because I have been putting hidden slides uh, to make the presentation shorter. Maybe that's the reason. I'm coming to uh, this part of the practical elimination. We introduced this topic in SSR 2 slash 1, saying that the possibility of certain conditions, people look very much at certain conditions, occurring is considered to have been practically eliminated. It is physically impossible for the conditions to occur, or if the conditions can be considered with a high degree of confidence to be extremely unlikely to arise. It's very easy to say. Uh, the question has to do. Is this new? In reality, no. This you can see already in Insac 12 in the 90s. 1990, and it was introduced in the IE safety standards for the first time at the level of the safety guide for design on the containment in 2004. Now it comes the play with a certain conditions because in reality, I don't want to confuse the people, you want to practically eliminate last or early releases. But the people say, well, for practically eliminate uh, the, uh, the last or early releases, you have to eliminate the conditions that lead to the practical releases. And we are in this thing, they say, well, these are the conditions and these are not the conditions, and the rest they call residual risk. So the, we have a debate in this, and, and next week there's going to be a meeting of WENRA they have a working group on this. Uh, well, I don't know. I try to explain you a bit what this we're talking about. These are uh, hypothetical accident sequence that could lead to an arsenal release uh, due to containment failure that cannot be uh, uh, resolved or mitigated by implementation of some technical means. This is the understanding. So they are thinking about something for which I cannot design. And for something I cannot design, I have to practically eliminate. And then we start thinking, what is this? So and then also the practical elimination as a whole, as a concept. It has to be also understood globally. So if you want to practically eliminate the large or early release, this is a result of a whole design approach. So the practical elimination does not occur here, just yes, because I put uh, uh, something for the containment or the containment catcher or something like this. It is very unlikely, as I said, the practical elimination because of the result of everything I'm doing here. So you see here the frequency. I'm coming there, and I'm making those conditions already very unlikely. This is just the core melt, but the release will come later, and so on. So I'm making it very practically eliminated. I, 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 
I don't know if I have to cross the line or not. I think yes, I have to cross and that does not don't make it uh, so. This. So it is the result of everything, yeah? Good. Uh, so let me see. So these things that we practically eliminate here, these are rare yeah? because of everything I have done there before. Because a Cormel accident is rare, yeah? Even though it happened in Fukushima, we assume it still is rare. OK, now, what, would, what to do and what are the conditions on how to evaluate? What we say is, first, let's identify what are the conditions to be practically eliminated. Then we identify what are the provisions for this design, for this act, for these conditions. And then we say how you can do, make the assessment. So the first thing you say, OK, for the practical purpose, we, let's group the conditions in this manner. And we put here, the first thing is uh, events that could lead to prone reactor damage and consequently early containment failure. And here we have two categories. One is the failure of a large component in the reactor coolant system, primarily the reactor vessel, but also could be the, the pressurizer or steam generator. I don't know if, if they will be, I'm not a specialist in this domain, but some people say, well, if you really have an explosion of a pressurizer, the containment will not hold. Yeah? I will not enter maybe in the debate, but imagine the vessel. The vessel should not break. If the vessel breaks, there's not much you can do. Uh, other thing will be an uncontrolled reactivity action. Of course, if you have an, uh, uh, a reactivity excursion in the core, uh, you know what happened. Look at Chernobyl. Uh, so this is one uh, thing. So this will be a prompt reactor core damage early containment failure, very fast. Second thing are severe accident phenomena, which could lead to early containment failure. And these are phenomena for which you cannot design, basically. You have direct containment heating as a result of high pressure core mail ejection. You have a core mail at high pressure. You have a large steam explosion. There you can debate if some containment can uh, resist the steam explosion. Some, we know it, it can something, but how large is another topic, but we put here, so you try to prevent it. And then the hydrogen detonation. Is it possible? Maybe it's possible, I don't know. But it is very difficult to design a containment against a hydrogen detonation in 2K. So the best thing is to practically eliminate the hydrogen detonation. And then you have another severe accident phenomena that can lead to another late containment failure. And here you have molten core concrete interaction. So if your core penetrates the vessel, goes there, sometimes penetrates the containment, that's it. And if you lose the containment heat removal system, eventually it heats up and, and so on. So those things you have to, to do. And then there is severe accident with containment bypass. You have you enter a severe accident, and for whatever the reason of the sequence, I don't know, imagine you have a steam generator to rupture or something like this, and the, the, the containment is bypassed. So then that it is going outside. And uh, last, we put the significant fuel degradation in the pool. Remember, we said before, we don't want to have the pool melting. So these are the things we identify. And then you, for each of the things, uh, you say, think, what I can do? And well, we are not discovering the wheel. But for the vessel, basically, you, you apply the ASME code in, in a short manner, or whatever you use in your country. So uh, the failure of the vessel validates the events in that concept, because there is no level 2, level 3, or something. You go from level 1 to level 5, period. Yeah? And uh, what you do there, well, it is about you know, <laughs> robust design, the, the selection of the best material, suitable composition, the default-free uh, fabrication, manufacturing, all these type of things, uh, control of the vessel, uh, uh, pressure thermal shock. Uh, all pressure. You have to minimize all this effect. You apply. That's why I say you apply the ASME code. So this is basically a strong, robust design. We're saying those things, OK. Basically, that you have a high confidence this is not going to happen. Of course, there is something sometimes some uh, some um, reliability fracture mechanics. There is some uh, demonstration that you can do expensive though into uh, the domain of the probabilistic. We don't want to call this. I mean, some people say this is not PSA, but it is kind of a, of a. Uh, probabilistic assessment, but the role of there is limited. I actually, I mean, you can do whatever you want with the PSA, but you have to implement those things because otherwise you can't design. So here, uh, what you do, you apply the adequate codes and uh, codes and all these uh, provisions. This is the way of the justification. Uh, the next one, 
What is that one? Okay. So I, mean, I put here, I don't know when, maybe I have a problem with the order of the slides or I'm pressing the wrong buttons. I don't know. Well, let me see what I have here. Um, uh, well, whatever possible, of course, you use the, the, from the two possibilities, low likelihood and impossibility, you go for the impossibility. But the question is not always uh, uh, impossibility is not always demonstrated, cannot be demonstrated. One thing is the intrinsic coefficients of the uh, moderator fuel and so on, so there's not going to be any, a power excursion. That's good. Sometimes uh, the hydrogen concentration and so on, so that uh, you do it by eliminating by inner containment or by the recombiners or something, no, not to reach this concentration. Otherwise, it has to be on, 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 uh, based on low probability. Uh, but we call low probability or unlikely because, I mean, if you see not impossible, let's say it's low probability. So for me, that means probabilistic, but this, for many people, mm, doesn't sound good. So when you say probability, in reality, it's probability, but associated to a strong design measure. So just to make sure that the probability is not that you pull at uh, numbers, probability based on some a strong justification of uh, deterministic of engineering the design. Yeah? Uh, let me see, because I thought I have some of the, yes. So I have here some in, in summary, uh, maybe some cases of all these other phenomena. We have the handling detonation, so you can rely on very uh, large containment volume, inert atmosphere, adequate number of design of recombines, that's what you do. High pressure corner ejection, direct containment heating. What you have is normally the demonstration now goes that uh, many designs are implementing a diverse system for depressurizing the vessel. If you can't prevent the core melt before it melts, you depressurize the vessel. You don't want to have the, the melting at high pressure. So there, you can use the PSA. You, you have the system, has to be, but you can use the PSA to assess the reliability of the depressurization system. PSA is useful for that. Containment bypass, well, uh, all sequences with core damage in containment bypass need to be eliminated. So you need to have paths need to ident be identified, whatever, steam generated tool wraps, or unisolated penetrations, and so on. PSA. PSA is something you can use to uh, see the reliability of the isolation provisions. But it is not that you simply use the PSA. You have to, there are requirements for isolation. And if you go to a country, they tell you it has to be a double uh, valve and this of this time, automatic, so on. So you can use the PSA. And then containment boundary made through. So well, you need to have some provisions to stabilize the, the, the core. <laughs> if you can inside the vessel, this was the uh, first option that people attempt. And if not, there is a, a core catcher. Yeah? So the, here, I don't think you can do much with the PSA. And then if you, these are what we say, the practical elimination of this phenomenon. Now, uh, the debate we have here is that uh, for other things, the, the cooling of the containment and all the story, uh, some people say this is not practical elimination, say this is residual risk. I don't understand very much the, 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 this differentiation. The point to be made here is that when you do a PSA level two that has been made uh, in many places and so on for the previous design, you do a PSA for a plant in which if I can eliminate those things or imagine this does not exist, okay. You do a PSA that goes up to here, and the PSA level two takes into account once you have melted the core, what can you do at the plan with whatever you have? You have a containment that it is not designed for a civil accident. You have a containment spray that it is designed for DBA not there for a civil accident. You have instrumentation that are not for civil accidents, but nevertheless, because there are margins, you can do some things. And you use this PSA with the last many uncertainties about the phenomena is there, and you come up with a number and say, okay, it's very low. Now, here, with those things, you can use the PSA, but the PSA now is based on the use of containment features that are designed for deck, are designed for civil accident. That's the difference. I mean, it is more solid demonstration, and probably you can come up with a better results of the PSA. By experience, I think PSA uh, level two goes with uh, just a factor of uh, 10 to the minus one from CDF or something like that. So that's the, that's the question. Yeah? 
but some people don't call this practical elimination. I don't want to enter this debate. In other words, I mean, the, if you by design exclude the vessel of the break of the vessel, the 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 the, the, the penetration of the of the base mat, uh, the, the detonation. Okay, very good. But still, you have the phenomena, so, uh, the civil accident phenomena. These people say, okay, this practical elimination, this is residual risk. Well, I don't know what you, how you want to call it. The ultimate goal is to prevent a large or early release. Sorry. Yeah. No, these people, these things are tech. We are talking about the new plants now, and all these are deck. But apart from the provision I raised this thing, we have made the requirement that the provisions for deck, not only the provisions for deck, everything in the plan at the end should lead to the practical elimination of large or early releases. Of course, some of these things here are for deck. You have hydrogen detonation, are for deck with Cornell, or the one you don't have the hydrogen detonation. But you don't come every day to uh, a generation of hydrogen because you have all these things to prevent the, the core damage. So this, at the end, the, 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 the contribution to safety is not just due to this part. It's due to the whole line of design. Um, oh, now is the picture that the one that uh, I was missing before. So we define uh, that time we were saying what is this ultimate equipment that is there to prevent uh, the large or early release for which you need to have more margins. And these are the ones that you put here. I, I forgot to put the, the, the alternative power supply to mention before, and so on. Uh, then uh, for these more margins, this is also the thing, some countries say, well, I can design for a larger uh, earthquake or a larger external event. And some of the people say, no, I don't do that. What I'm going to do is to use a best estimate approach to demonstrate with a high level of confidence that the values of the parameters that will bring me to this QFH effect are not rich because of the margins that I have. So may think it's a way of cheating, but so in fact, they don't design for a higher level. People say, I'm going to demonstrate that I still have these margins that you require to me. But this depends also on the on the nature of the hazard, and you know, and the functions of the SSC, and, and, and so on, the design of the safety authority. It's funny because you know, you will think, well, if uh, if in Japan some people is let's say designing for zero five Gs, so now we have to ask him for design for what for for zero seven, you know, or even for more. It's unbelievable for what they, they design. But these people they do design. And in other countries, however, for instance, in the uh, in the in the US, uh, they they apply a factor of uh, uh, um, thirty. Um, I'm confusing. Sorry. Now, two thirds more. Two thirds more. Uh, they apply two thirds more from the the, the design uh, basis. But this is uh, this is rich through demonstration. Sorry, through the most not through further design. And then also the. The French they define this hardened safety core. The, they define a set of equipment for which they want to have 50% in excess. I don't know how they demonstrate. European utility requirements, there is also a factor of 40% above something. Well, uh, OK, that, I think that's my last slide. And then we have 10 minutes for discussion, because maybe many discussions. And I also need to, to stop for my voice. The non-permanent equipment, very easy. What is not permanent and can be or cannot be at the plant. For us, it's not part of the design, no matter if it has wheels or, or, or wings or, or fins or whatever. That's not part of the design. So the, we were asked to introduce now in the design after Fukushima connections to facilitate the use of these things. The connections are part of the design, but the non-permanent equipment that is very well welcome is not part of the design. So that means that for new plants, these safety features for hooking up for connecting this permanent equipment should not be necessary for DBA and DEC. That means I come here to the picture, like me reconstruct here, DEC A, DEC B. If you are here and your DBA fails and something, and you have a portable diesel or whatever, a portable water, I'm sure you're going to use it. And I'm sure you're going to not let the, uh, the core melt, because no, you 
will use it whenever you think it's necessary. It's part of the accident management. But this portable diesel for the new plant shall not be necessary for this. There shall be an SBO diesel there. There should be an SBO diesel already. Of course, if the SBO diesel fails, then you put the other one, but shall not be necessary. And this creates also a lot of confusion, because also some of this has been used in, I mean, put in many plants after Fukushima for uh, the system plant for the forest. We have all these uh, countries with the flex approach, this and that. So we try to meet it maybe in the deck talk if we succeed. But the understanding is that this permanent equipment is not part of the design. This is something about not the design. We also don't want to give the same credibility to some uh, portable pump for the fire brigade, to the pumps for core cooling that we have implemented in the design. And you can use them, and probably you don't wait for the core mail, for the core to melt to use them. That's not the point. But in the demonstration of the design, uh, they shall not be necessary to prevent this. So they shall not be necessary. You can use them. So that's the thing, the, the message that probably is not, I don't know. So, end of the story. Now you can ask. Don't, please. Sorry, the real thing? DID level 3, 3 and 3B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that 3B, yeah. so there, there is some additional uh, safety system. Whether that safety system will qualify like 3A? Should qualify? Uh, uh, qualify like 3A. So in the, uh, in the previously in the DBA, there is some safety system yeah. to qualify. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, safety system. Yeah. But in that, that level has been now fitted. Yes. Level three is bigger to three and three B. And three A is the same. Yeah, three B. What are the additional safety uh, features I'm putting? So whether that will also uh, cover that single failure criteria. That is the, okay. In this subdivision, to call it its own way, the level three A is the former level three. So the three A is the safety system. These are designed as safety system. For the three B, the single failure criterion is not required. But then the same DID level. Yeah, who cares? But if you want, instead of saying we put alpha, beta, gamma, delta, or one, two, three, four, five, six, we put an additional one, and everybody is happy. I mean, uh, this, the important thing is what are going to, you, to be your design rules for all those things. The thing is, it's a matter of terminology. But my point is also, if the 3B, or 4A, I don't want to call it, if you design all these things in the same manner as you define the safety system, then I would say that's a safety system. For instance, because sometimes people say, oh, if you fail a, a safety system, and you have another safety system, this is already deck. Okay, some people say that. Okay, good. But then you go, for instance, in the boiling water reactor, like Fukushima and so on, and you have the integrated actions of the safety system. And you have first high pressure cormel injection or cormel spray, cormel, cormel spray, cormel injection. And if this fails, this is automatic depressurization system ADS. And then you go to low pressure and you have. LCS and uh, uh, low power, LPCS and LPCI, whatever. Okay? Uh, so, and this is called the automatic res integrated response of the ECCS. So, when you go to low pressure, it's because the high pressure doesn't work, either because you cannot inject or because the break is too big and it's not effective. So, but some people don't call it DEC. This is the integrated thing. So, the point is, all these uh, systems are designed as safety systems. So this is the integrated response of the emergency core cooling. So, if you now go to your plant and put something in addition, and you design it in the same way as a safety system, say, it's going to be uh, with the same design rules, uh, safety class two, and you put it uh, single failure criterion, uh, conservative, everything, then I will tell you what this is not the additional safety system that you have put. Why you call it DEC? So you call it DEC because it's something that gives you some relax, gives you some opportunity to use something, you know, that it is in addition. Normally, the operator, the regulator, will not let you to use everything as DEC. A deck is something there to complement it. The, the regulator will tell you, no, 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 you design as you have to design. The deck is only going to be exceptionally to cover something, to give you some. But well, uh, here we also enter in a, in a domain in which, so which regulator is going to be using. I, I, I miss a slide that I want to clarify because, first, I want to say, 
when you go to places like Wenra and so on, they include also there uh, as deck um, external hazards that uh, exceed the design basis hazard or earthquake or flooding, whatever. And as in the previous presentation, say no, sorry, the hazards are not PIEs. A hazard is not an AO, a hazard is not an accident. So a hazard is also not a deck. So if you have a hazard that it is too high, it may lead to an accident. It should not go into an accident because this is the, you protect the earthquake so that you don't want to have an, an accident because of the earthquake. But of course, it's too high eventually. Okay, you have an accident. And let's imagine it's too much. Okay, you go into deck. But we say no. Call it whatever. But for us, we say I don't, we don't want to, to pollute our understanding of PIEs with the hazard. So we said that. So this is one point I wanted to make. But uh, this one country in Europe, I think, is Finland and a few others that are strong in this thing. And the people, okay, okay, we call it like this. That's one thing. Now, another point is also interesting, I forgot, is you look at this uh, type of uh, uh, list of deck, and people say, well, um, a multiple steam uh, uh, generator tool rupture. And then you say, well, OK, and what do you do for that? And then, no, there is no system. What I'm doing is as, now I justify with the best estimate analysis that if instead of one tube breaks, I break two or three, I still can cope with that. And so people call deck. So I say, well, we have something single out here, because in reality, you're not putting something in addition for that. but you are using the best estimate approach that your regulator lets you do. And the same, the same has been done with the uh, double guillotine break uh, locker in, for instance, in the EPR. They say, well, we now have this leak before break. We have now all the, we invest in all the support in, in the, in this, you know, in, in supporting the, the, the pipes, minimizing the weldings, this and that. And say, now we take out the double guillotine break from, uh, I mean, that means a uh, large local break from the list of the design basis accident. It's taken out. But they say now we demonstrate that if it happens, sign a lower probability, we still are going to demonstrate to you that the plan can do, can cope with that, but we use the best estimate approach. So the whole thing is not very clean because people start putting this in and say, okay, people are having different understandings. So, so what we call deck. Okay, okay, we say we have to be putting also these things where people put very rare events with and use the best estimate. At least they do something different. I don't know. I have to agree with everybody. We are the IE, otherwise we don't progress in original document. But we want to make sure that deck is deck when you put something that to design for deck. You know, uh, when you just do uh, accident management or um, use portable equipment, so I say, no, no, that, that's not deck. Because, uh, and then also we single out this thing with the hazard because we don't want to confuse the hazards with the PIE or, or with the. Okay, I don't know if there are more questions. I have one more. Yes, two, two euros per question. Maybe this is the reason my director and some people asked me to remove this box. Uh, <laughs> maybe, but I, I can put you. Okay. You know, I mean, it's funny because we, you explain things in words and people agree. I put a picture to make it clear, and everybody complains about the pictures. Uh, that one, for instance, yeah. Whoop. Or maybe, sorry. Let me use this one. Here, maybe. Sorry. Uh, I have an internal flooding here. OK, sorry. Let me go to do this thing quickly. So maybe this is clear. OK. That one, the question is, we only design here. Here, we don't design anything. Maybe it's confusing. The question is, if you design something, you design for, for something. For what you design? 
If you have some equipment here, for what is it going to be? Going to be for normal operation? No. Going to be for DBA? No. So it is for, for, for a civil accident? Because if once, so if it is for a civil accident, you put it there. So, but, okay, we remove it, and that's fine. So the design ends here. Actually, what we're saying in this thing is, what we're saying in this thing is that there is nothing here. The, only, the other message is that uh, we want these conditions, this situation, this for which we don't design, to be practically eliminated. We want to have it at a very low probability. But then we also end in this uh, discussion, what is practical elimination? If it is just the conditions to lead to that, or it is just the, or the, or the practical elimination of large or early releases. I understand the second. So, no discussion because this now has disappeared from the tech talk, from the document, and this thing is put it in the text. Okay, it bothers some people, and I have to understand that the big people, it's not a big deal. No? But we don't design. There is nothing that we design after deck. Well, well, I will tell you, you want to, uh, to prevent last or early releases. You have to meet this goal. This is what they say the requirement. The demonstration is not my, my, my. You have to prevent this last or early releases. Now, you design for something, okay? So for what, if there will be something there, for what it will be designed? For what? For text C or what, for what is going to be designed? No, no, I'm not making it. There's no deck C. There is a deck A, deck B. Or. So, yes. Yes, to come together. No, if core melts happen, okay, your main priority at this moment is to preserve the containment. In the long term, you have to stabilize the core as well. But you design to mitigate the consequences of the severe accident. Hmm? So this is to prevent the containment failure, ultimately. So, and if you have a large or early release, it's because the containment has failed. No, no, deck B starts with the fuel melting, not the stops, it starts. Yes. You are, are you waiting for asking? Okay, so, good. Okay. Questions, more questions? No. People, it's Friday and are lost, uh, tired, and, uh, and I sit five minutes. Okay. If not, thank you very much. I hope it was helpful.